Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, and our personality today is Lionel de Rothschild, born in 1808 and dies in 1879. Lionel de Rothschild was the son of Nathan Mayer Rothschild, who was the founder of the English branch of the banking dynasty of the Rothschild family. He was taken to the family business in 1836, the same year he married, and very soon after his father died, leaving him as a senior partner leading a number of his brothers in the family business. He made a massive success of finance and became a very wealthy individual and leader of the City of London of both Jewish and non-Jewish business communities. His eminence was so great that he became the focus of the campaign for Jewish emancipation. He was elected to be the Member of Parliament for the City of London in 1847. But at that time, the law required every MP, when they began to sit as a Member of Parliament, to take an oath on a Christian Bible and swear that they would be loyal to the Queen on the true faith of a Christian. Naturally, Rothschild refused to take this oath, and although the Prime Minister of the day, Lord John Russell, tried to achieve a change in the law, this was not successful for another 11 years. It was only in 1858 that Rothschild could take his seat as the first Jewish member of parliament prepared to swear only on a Jewish Bible and only as a Jew. He was very involved in a variety of other causes. The Irish potato famine in the 1840s caused absolute devastation to the population of Ireland and Rothschild organised the largest private donation of money to relieve those suffering from malnutrition and famine in Ireland. He had friends on all sides of the political spectrum. William Ewart Gladstone, the Prime Minister from the Liberal Party and his own party, advised the Queen to make him a member of the House of Lords, but Queen Victoria refused. She thought it was not appropriate for a Jew at that point to be a member of the House of Lords. He was also friendly with Benjamin Disraeli, the uh, Conservative Prime Minister and a converted Jew. Now Disraeli in 1875 was faced with the possibility that he could buy a large number of shares in the Suez Canal which was a very important trade route for Britain in order to get to their overseas empire. Now, Parliament was not sitting and therefore it could not vote the funds necessary in order to buy the shares in the Suez Canal Company. So Rothschild was approached by Disraeli, who sent him a loan of four million pounds, an extraordinary amount of money in those days, simply in a handshake in order to buy shares in the Suez Canal. This caused some controversy as Parliament was not consulted, but it was a major coup for Disraeli personally and for Britain. As well as giving a huge amount of money to both Jewish and non-Jewish causes, Rothschild knew how to live well. He had two fine mansions, one in London at 148 Piccadilly and one in Gunnersbury in the Vale of Aylesbury where he enjoyed the life of a country squire. He was a leader of the Jewish community, he opened many synagogues, he financed many synagogues and his descendants became the leaders of the Anglo-Jewish community for many years after his death. He left a collection of old master paintings as well as an extraordinary record both in business and politics and philanthropy. Thanks for joining.